The political situation here in New Hampshire, the rest of the country is still watching us. Once every four years, when the United States turns its attention to choosing a leader, a small snowy state in the northeastern corner of the country becomes the political center of the nation. It will show the other states that New Hampshire clearly wants Richard Nixon to be the next president of the United States. The final campaigning is underway in the New Hampshire presidential primary coming up next Tuesday. On the Republican side, Richard Nixon is urging New Hampshire Republicans to give him a big send-off in his quest for the GOP presidential nomination. New Hampshire signals the start of the national presidential campaign by holding the first primary election of the year. So the men who then wanted to be president, Richard Nixon, Michigan's Governor George Romney, and Senator Eugene McCarthy from Minnesota, drew national attention to New Hampshire as they started the campaign with ritual treks through the snow, hoping these visits would bring them victory in this first voter test, where one man from each political party would win the state's support at the political conventions in the summer. Laconia is a small town in New Hampshire. The most popular pastime in winter is dog sled racing. Problems that concern other parts of the country may seem far away, but behind its placid landscape and its comfortable homes, Laconia's people were aware of the challenges their country faced in this election year, and many became actively involved in the primary campaign. Jim Wilson lives in Laconia. Like many of his neighbors, he is a member of the Republican Party. This year, he is chairman of the Laconia Chamber of Commerce, and he owns the town's camera store. If you're familiar with Super 8 camera Z, this is the one that loads with a drop-in cartridge. Jim cares deeply about the future of his country, and he is concerned about the way the government spends money, including his tax money. He thinks a Republican administration can do a better job, and Jim thinks there is one man who can do it best. Jim is a Nixon man. There's absolutely no advantage for Nixon to come and debate because That's right. as long as Nixon stays in the background, says nothing, Romney just digs a deeper hole and buries himself. That's so right. the Nixon, when well, he comes Nixon out, he's Nixon right on top. With Romney right now, is it? But his wife, Anne, is still considering other candidates. If uh, Rockefeller were going to run, I'd vote for him because I think he's that middle of the road candidate that we need. But would you consider voting for Eugene McCarthy? Well, let's, all right, so that's beside the point. We know he's not going to make it. There were others in Laconia who did not share Anne's pessimistic appraisal of Senator McCarthy. One was Ron O'Callaghan. Like Jim, Ron is a businessman. He runs a family-owned electronics firm. He is a member of the Democratic Party. In 1964, Ron had voted for President Johnson. But this year, deeply disturbed by the war in Vietnam, he had decided to work for the election of Senator Eugene McCarthy. Clearly, though, our point McCarthy was opposed to the course of the war and had challenged the president for the Democratic nomination. But the war has taken so much money out of the economy, taken so much, uh, the, the war in poverty, the, uh, what Johnson called the Great Society, uh, so much punch has been taken out of what he tried to do because of the war, that it, it's become a mockery. Oh, well, put somebody else in if you think he's wrong. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> the Laconia Chamber of Commerce sponsored a series of breakfasts for all the candidates, and Ron and Jim and their wives, Anne and Dottie, attended them all. And Ron got his first close look at the man he wanted to see win. As I see the campaign in 68, the issue of Vietnam itself is, is a vital one, of course, and you could pass a harsh judgment on that war if it were isolated altogether from any domestic consequences or any other international consequences. But underneath all of this, I think, is a fundamental judgment that we're called upon to make as to what the real role of America is, to what direction do we want to give to America, of what influence do we want it to have on the rest of the world, 
And I see this is the fundamental test that we have to face up to in the, the electoral process of the year 1968. Richard Nixon came to town a few days later, and Jim had a chance to meet and talk with the man who was his personal choice for the presidency. Nixon had the most practical experience of all the candidates. As vice president in the Eisenhower administration, he had been actively involved in running the country for eight years. Nixon was a man that Republicans had always been able to count on. He attended thousands of dinners and rallies to help the Republican cause. The people he helped remembered and appreciated his work. And it was this personal contact with thousands of ordinary Americans that was to become the backbone of the Nixon campaign. It was my pleasure to have Mr. Nixon here as our speaker when I came into office this past year. I know he uh, mentioned being just here and I just met your meeting. wife. And right. Boy, you're really talking up. Well, you know, we have to uh, really promote sled dogging and all our winter events around here. Jim was pleased to have Nixon as his guest at the World Championship dog sled races. Well, doing about an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, 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 an hour and eight. Well, anyway, now I've seen it in Alaska and I've seen it in Laconia. <laughs> Good. Well, it's right. a pleasure to have Good you to here Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. And you have my vote, so uh, I want Thank you to know that, well, that it's... Uh, I, <laughs> that? I mean that. Jim had promised Nixon his vote, and he went to work to fulfill that promise by working for the Nixon campaign in Laconia. Don't we have any other choice, Jim? Well, there are quite a few choices. Are you, uh, are you a, a true Johnson Democrat? All the way. I, I think that he's handling the things as well as they can be handled. What, 7 4 mm, Right. War. The Democrats who were supporting the president had organized an intensive write-in campaign, urging voters to endorse the administration by writing President Johnson's name on the Democratic ballot, in effect asking him to run again. I would say we've got some work that has to be done on election day to better this. And be sure that you write in the name of President Johnson. Senator McCarthy was a newcomer to presidential politics. And since many Democrats were supporting the president, Ron and Dotty began work on the McCarthy campaign with few assets. There was little popular support for the senator, a sparse organization, and even less money. Every vote was important. Well, we're glad you stopped in this morning. Huh? We're glad you stopped in this morning. Send some more of your friends yeah. in for this little bus. The McCarthy campaign did have one great asset, young people, many of them students too young to vote. They flocked to New Hampshire to support the senator's cause. At first, it was called the Children's Crusade, and no one thought they could compete with the professionals in the hard work of organizing a presidential campaign. But leaders of both political parties were to describe this sudden involvement by thousands of young people in the political process as one of the most important benefits of the election year. Well, we'd like to give you some literature. Oh. Huh? So hopefully we could get a good vote. Oh, he's a good candidate, I think. Uh, I enjoy Senator it. McCarthy also got some support from another unorthodox source. Actors and actresses lent some of their glamour to the cause, and Paul Newman became the political box office smash of Laconia. You have areas where you feel your own rumblings and your own dissension and your own questioning then I think it's necessary to get behind the senator now, early in the game, and not sit around and wait till you feel that you're ready to make a, a political con commitment that's convenient to you. A few weeks before primary day, the Republican race lost a challenger. George Romney withdrew. The CBS News poll of Republicans in New Hampshire last night shows that George Romney's withdrawal has helped Richard Nixon as much as Nelson Rockefeller. Of the Romney supporters who now say they will vote for another candidate, about half favor Nixon and half favor Rockefeller. 
people like you might write Rockefeller's name in. Well, you're... A lot of Some people, including Ann Wilson, Rockefeller thought Governor Nelson Rockefeller, Rockefeller might take Which Romney's place. Felt about Romney as they did. And I will vote for any Republican candidate that wins in Miami at, right. the, at the convention. Nixon, and it'll either be Nixon or Rockefeller. But no one could really compete with Richard Nixon in New Hampshire. Oh, there he is. By the time Nixon made his last campaign speech, he had most of the state's Republican votes. And according to all predictions, he was already a winner. I say to you, having traveled through this state, having met hundreds of you personally and thousands of you that I've spoken to, having heard your questions, having looked into your faces, you have given me new hope about America. Is New Hampshire going to indicate this bellwether state that a change is going to come in November, or is it going to be more of the same? And I say to you, turn out. Let's get the biggest vote we've ever had. And with that vote, you not only will see to it that we will win tomorrow, but that New Hampshire will vote for new leadership in November, and America will get a new president in January. Thank you. Primary day in New Hampshire was quiet, a sharp contrast to the intensity of the campaigns. Hi, right, you ready to go down and vote? I've got Bunny to watch the store right now, and uh, it, it seems like a good time. We can get there while there aren't too many crowds or anything. But each okay, voter went to the polls with the obligation to make his choice in this first test as carefully as he would in November. Hi, right, Amber. The voting procedure was simple. Wilson, James R. Republican or Democrat? Republican. Registered voters received their party's ballot. Dorothy O'Callaghan, Democrat. Claire Livingston. Moved to a booth to mark it in private, returned it to a sealed ballot box, and had their names recorded to prevent voter fraud. James R. Wilson. James R. Wilson. Ron and Dottie voted for McCarthy, but they also had a personal interest in this election. Ron was on the ballot as a McCarthy delegate. If elected, he would go to Chicago in August to vote for the senator as a representative of his state. The polls would close at six o'clock, but until then, campaign workers for all the candidates were busy, urging their neighbors to vote. Uh, no, I'm going to Gilmington, but not for him. Have you voted yet for the, in the primaries for the president? No, sir, but that's my boy right there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is Mrs. Kirby at Nixon headquarters. We wanted to be sure and remind you to vote today, and we'd be glad to provide At Nixon headquarters, voters were offered rides to the polls, a common practice in both political parties. It began to snow in Laconia, but that did not stop the voters from going to the polls. It looked so easy, a mark on a piece of paper, a name written in. It was as simple as picking out a new hat or selecting fresh vegetables for dinner, and it was done as casually. But in each voter's mind, there was the feeling that his vote, his personal choice of a presidential candidate, could make a difference. I now declare the polls closed. While Ron went to McCarthy headquarters in Manchester, Dottie stayed in Laconia. And she was finding it hard to wait for the final vote count. It was an upset. 
McCarthy made a surprisingly strong showing, and young people who had worked for him suddenly had proof that they could influence a national election by working for change within the framework of the democratic process. Ron was amazed and delighted when he found out he had scored a personal upset victory and had been elected as a delegate. Dotty, of course, was thrilled. Jim and Anne stayed home on primary night with their children to celebrate Nixon's overwhelming victory in the Republican race. And they were convinced that their candidate would win more victories in the future. As the campaign moved out of New Hampshire and into other states, Ron traveled to nearby Vermont to work for McCarthy at that state's Democratic Convention which was held, instead of a primary, to pick the state's delegates and presidential choices. And now McCarthy was facing competition from a new candidate. Senator Robert Kennedy had decided to run. With the decisions that are made by this convention today... There were other unexpected events. With our hopes and the world's hopes for peace in the balance every day, I do not Jim and Ann did not realize at first, as they listened to the president's speech, that he was about to tell the nation he would not run for the presidency again. Partisan causes. Accordingly, I shall not seek, and I will not accept, the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Vice President Humphrey became the last major Democratic candidate to enter the race. As heir to the support that had been given to the President, Humphrey acquired a substantial number of delegate votes before the National Convention. Senator Robert Kennedy ended most of his campaign speeches with the phrase, some men see things as they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Before those dreams could ever become reality, Senator Kennedy was killed, shot by an assassin in the kitchen of a Los Angeles hotel. mourned, and for a time, politics were forgotten. Although the country had lost a man that many loved, his death could not destroy the essential stability of the democratic process. The nation still had to choose a leader, and in time, the campaigns began again. Nixon poster? Mm. Oh, you mean for class? Yes. Jim Wilson, working for Nixon in Laconia, was looking forward to the Republican National Convention. Okay, well, I'll handle that. The choices at the Miami Beach Convention were Richard Nixon, <laughs> Governor Nelson Rockefeller of New York, who was now working hard for the nomination, and California's governor, Ronald Reagan. As the Republican delegates gathered in this resort city, it soon became clear that Nixon was also their choice by an overwhelming mandate. The next president of the United States, Richard Nixon. Tonight, 
I again proudly accept that nomination for President of the United States. Tonight, I see the face of a child. He lives in a great city. He's black or he's white. He's Mexican, Italian, Polish. None of that matters. What matters, he's an American child. He sleeps the sleep of childhood and he dreams the dreams of a child. That child in that great city is more important than any politician's promise. He is America. I see another child tonight. He hears the train go by at night and he dreams of faraway places where he'd like to go. Seems like an impossible dream. But he has helped on his journey through life. A father who had to go to work before he finished the sixth grade sacrificed everything he had so that his sons could go to college. And tonight, he stands before you, nominated for President of the United States of America. selected Maryland's governor, Spuro Agnew, as his running mate for the office of vice president. It was now time for the Democratic Convention, and McCarthy and Vice President Humphrey were the leaders in the Democratic race. Ron and Dottie went to Chicago as part of the New Hampshire delegation. There, they continued their protest, along with many other delegates, who also wanted to see a more detailed plan for peace as the party's campaign theme. Other demonstrators protested against the war in the city's streets. And these protests erupted into a confrontation with police that drew the concerned attention of many Americans. The delegates shared that concern, but first they had to fulfill their obligation to nominate a Democrat for the presidency. As the balloting went on, it became clear that Vice President Humphrey had the support of the convention. But Ron and most of the New Hampshire delegates were pledged to vote for McCarthy, and they honored that pledge. Yes. 20 votes for Senator Eugene J. McCarthy, and six votes for Vice President Humphrey. And Vice President Humphrey won the nomination. Ron and Dottie went back to Laconia and talked about the convention with their friends. It is the very differences of individuals, of indi individual groups and everything else that save this whole damn thing for us. If we all thought, it, thought the same, we wouldn't really be free. Because if you believe in democracy, you believe that two things, ration and reason. The other thing is you realize that all people don't look at what is right for human society the same way. It's a matter of degree. So somehow you have to talk about it. And the politics, you never get 100%. If you get 80%, you'll you probably end up with 60% of what you really want. For the guy you work the hardest for. It is never easy to accept defeat, but Ron endorsed the decision in Chicago and supported the Democratic nominee, realizing that Humphrey had been nominated by the will of the majority. And before long, a large Humphrey poster appeared on the side of Ron's house. As the campaign moved into its final weeks, the nation considered its choices. Vice President Humphrey, George Wallace, the former governor of Alabama, representing a third party movement, and Richard Nixon.
campaigns are always flamboyant, and as the candidates moved across the country, they were surrounded by all the traditional vote-getting glitter. But there was a serious purpose behind the bands and balloons. Each candidate was meeting the people, giving them a chance to evaluate his thoughts as a potential president and to look closely at him as a man. Laconia's people in the fall are part of one of nature's most impressive pageants. As the leaves turn and the ducks drop in briefly on their way to the south, the countryside signals the end of a season with a stillness and grandeur interrupted only by the sounds of children returning to school. The people of the United States went to the polls to elect their president, confronted by a decision that could hold the key to the nation's future place in the world. But they knew that whomever the new president would be, he would receive the support of the entire nation as he was given the awesome responsibility of leading the country. How different from that morning eight years and ago. And in this election year, the nation chose Richard Nixon, bringing to its final conclusion a democratic process that had started months before in New Hampshire. I received a very gracious message from the vice president. I know exactly how he felt. Having lost a close one eight years ago and having won a close one this year, I can say this. Winning's a lot more fun. <laughs> very exciting. He made a great speech. It was very, very close. will be on TV again close. tonight, I'm sure, and you'll be able to watch it. A kid yelled out when we came in from lunch recess, Nixon won, and everybody said, they looked around and everything. Were they happy? Yeah, they were. Well, I'm really glad that I voted for Nixon because I believe that he can really get things started again. It all boils down to the fact that the country wanted a clean sweep, and this is what is, Nixon is going to do. He's going to, he's going to get in a whole new uh, bunch of people who will have a different outlook on things, and this is what we needed. It's just overwhelming. I, I couldn't, I, I've never been so uh, pleased at a political outcome. Naturally, as a Democrat, I'm un unhappy that he won, but in a sense, I, I think there's a certain amount of justice there. I think that what the American people have done, have told Nixon, have told Johnson, Humphrey, anybody who, you know, might be president now or in the future, that uh, they're accountable for their actions. They're accountable for their policies. 